Welcome back, McGrathlete. After six weeks off the tools, would you believe I found the time to make one uh, extension to mass video? How do I do it? Hard to say. Um, today we're looking at some revision questions from the proof topic in extension two, looking at some past HSC questions. Starting off with some easier band two, three level questions, and then working our way up towards the much more challenging band five and six questions. Uh, the way to get the best value out of these videos is when the question comes on screen, you pause it and try it yourself. And then when I work through my solution, you can see whether we did the same thing or if maybe I fixed some of your mistakes or you know maybe vice versa. So let's dive into it with a band two proof question from the most recent HSC paper at the time of recording this video. Multiple choice from 2022. Here is a proof that is trying to show that negative four is equal to zero, uh, which actually is not true. So this can't be right. Starting off with a equal negative four, and then a squared is 16. So we've got all these steps, um, line one, two, three, four, and then eventually a equals zero, but a was initially negative four. Obviously this is not true, so one of these lines must be an incorrect implication, and the question is asking you which of the four lines is the incorrect implication? Where is the mistake, essentially? Pause the video, have a go, and then I'll explain uh, where I think the mistake is, or where I know it is, because I check my answers. Right, so starting off, squaring negative four turns into 16, that's true. Four times negative four plus four equal to negative 12, that is also true. So line one is all good. Line two is taking these two equations and adding them together. So a squared plus four a plus four on the left, and on the right, 16 plus negative 12 is four. That's also true. You are allowed to add two equations together to create a third equation. So line two is all good. Line three on the left, we are factorizing as a plus two squared, and on the right, we're writing four as two squared, which again is all good. So, so far, line one, two, and three haven't broken any rules yet. So line four must be the dodgy one. Have a think about how going from line three to line four is a little bit dodgy. What we're doing is we're taking the square root of both sides. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you learned in year eight or nine that when you take the square root in an equation, you don't just take the positive answer, you also take the negative answer. So if a plus two squared is equal to four, it means that a plus two could be two or it could be negative two. So for that reason, uh, line four is incorrect and the rest of them are all correct. But a lot of people got that right, which is why it's only a band two question. Okay, moving on to a band three question from 2020 HSC, another multiple choice. We've got a proposition, uh, two to the n minus one is not prime, then n is not prime. Uh, all the following four statements are true, and which one of them disproves the proposition? Pause the video, take your pick, and then I'll run through my solution. All right, so if you wanna disprove an if-then statement, I like to think of it as it's got two parts. The first part is the if, and the second part is the then. If you wanna disprove this statement, you need to find a scenario where the first part of the statement holds true, but then the second part does not hold true. We wanna find an if that doesn't lead to this then. So we're looking for a two to the n minus one that is not prime. So straight away, we're looking at b and d because in a and c, two to the five minus one is prime. So the first part of the proposition is not satisfied. So out of b and c, we both have these expressions being not prime because they're divisible. Uh, but we're trying to pick which one of these has the power of the two, which is the n, uh, which is prime because we want the second part to be um, negated essentially. So the answer must be option D because we have two to the 11 minus one is divisible by 23. First part is satisfied. However, the power um, 11 is not not prime. 11 is a prime number. Okay, so option D is the one where the first part is satisfied, but then the second part is shown to be not true. So option D is our answer. Moving on to the band four, moving out of multiple choice now, we've got one from again, the recent 2022 HSC paper. We've got um, prove that for all integers n, if n is bigger than or equal to three, uh, if two to the n minus one is prime, then n cannot be even. All right, so this is a situation where we have an if then statement that we are trying to prove. However, the first part of the statement, the if section, is a bit more complicated than the second half. The first part has got a power and we're trying to look at primes. That's pretty hectic. The second part is nice and easy and cannot be even. When you have an if then statement like this, where the first part is more complicated than the second part, this is a really good application of proof by contrapositive. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the contrapositive statement. That's where you negate both parts of the statement and you reverse the direction. So we're changing to n cannot be odd, which is the negation, and we're changing two to the n minus one being not prime, and we're reversing the direction of the proposition, okay? 
this contrapositive statement, if we prove this, then the original statement will also be true by contrapositive, okay? One of the laws of maths. So we're gonna prove this red statement instead, and that's gonna prove the uh, three mark black question. Okay, so if n cannot be odd, let's define a not odd, which is an even number. So n is equal to two times something, that something is an integer, and just like in the question, um, k cannot be, sorry, k is greater than or equal to two. Let's talk about that because it's actually kind of important. The question said that n is a number that's bigger than or equal to three. And in this section, we're saying n is an even number. That means that n has to be four or six or eight, it can't be two, okay? So if n is equal to four or above, that means that the k that we're multiplying by two has to be greater than or equal to two. That's gonna come in handy later, okay? So that's an important thing to notice about this question if you wanna work through it in the simplest way. Okay, so now we're looking at two to the n minus one. We're changing the n to be a two k. And now the goal is to show that this right-hand side is not a prime number, which is pretty tricky. And there's a method to spot that makes it a bit easier that you can look at right here. We're going to take the two out of the power of the two to the k. Okay, so we're writing two to the two k as two to the k squared. Okay, these two are equivalent. Now writing it like this makes it a bit more obvious that what we're working with here is a difference of two squares. We've got two k squared here, and we have one k, sorry, we have one squared here. So we can actually factorize this as a difference of two squares like this, two k minus one, two k plus one. So we've shown that two to the n minus one is equal to a product of two numbers. However, for this to be a um, not prime number, we're trying to show this is, uh, what's it called? Composite, that's the word. Four years at uni. All right, cool. To show this is composite, we need to prove that both of these are not one, okay? Because just because it has two factors doesn't mean that it's not prime. We need to show that both the factors are not equal to one. So the way we're gonna do that is starting off with k greater than or equal to two, as we established before. This means that two to the k is gonna be greater than or equal to four, okay? Because two squared is four, you get that. So now two squared uh, minus one is gonna be greater than three and two to the k plus one is gonna be greater than or equal to five. So this right here is our argument that from our information that we know from k, this is enough to say that two k minus one is not equal to one and two k plus one is not equal to one because this one is bigger than three or equal to and this one is bigger than or equal to five. So right here, we're showing these guys are unequal to one. We're showing that we have two factors that are not one. Therefore, two to the n minus one is composite, AKA not prime. And therefore we have proven the contrapositive statement, which means that the original statement we were trying to prove is also true. So three marks there. And it's the easiest way is to recognize that, hey, I can reverse this around and do the contrapositive, make my life a lot easier. So keep an eye out for these because quite often they're not gonna tell you to do this. You've got to know when to look for it. All right, another band four, because I don't think these are good practice because band five, six are kind of life ruining, but band four and three is where we should be able to pick up some good marks if we know our stuff. So this is an irrationality proof from 2022. We've got um, n is greater than one. Show that log base n of n plus one is irrational. Okay, whenever I see an irrationality proof, um, my brain goes straight away to using proof by contradiction because that's what you should have been taught in class. So we are going to assume the opposite. We're gonna say, hey, what if this was rational? So let log base n of n plus one be rational. So the way we write this, and you do need to practice this because it's very important, we're gonna say that the logarithm can be written as a fraction of a and b, where a and b are integers, and also it's worth mentioning that a and b are co-prime. That means that a over b is already simplified and they have no common factors. Okay, that's what co-prime means, no common factors. Now our goal is to show that this statement doesn't make sense because then this doesn't make sense and then this must be true. That's the idea with a proof by contradiction. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to take this expression and we're gonna turn it instead of a logarithmic equation, we're gonna write it as an exponential equation. So starting with the n, we have n to the power of a over b is equal to n plus one. Okay, so rewriting this statement without the use of a logarithm. Now we'll take both sides of the equation and we'll raise them to the power of b. This is because on the left-hand side, the powers will multiply and the b's will cancel out, leaving us with n to the power of a. On the right-hand side, we have n plus one to the power of b. So now the tricky part, we need to form an argument as to why a number to a power could not be equal to the number one above it to any power, okay? Easiest way to do this is to think about if, um, if n was an odd number, it would mean that n plus one is even. Vice versa, if n was even, then n plus one would be odd. Okay, this is powerful because um, say n is an odd number, like three, 
any power of three is also gonna be an odd number, okay? Three, nine, 27, they're always odd, okay? You would have proved in class that a product of two odd numbers is odd, and you would have proved that a product of two even numbers is even. So we can say if the left-hand side, if n is odd, the left-hand side is always odd, but then n plus one is even, so the right-hand side will always be even, which means they can never be equal. Vice versa, if n was even, then uh, the left-hand side is always even, and the right-hand side is an odd number to a power, so it's always odd. This is our argument for saying this equality doesn't make sense because this equation doesn't make sense because this statement is incorrect. Okay, so that's our contradiction. Say, hey, this right here doesn't work. Therefore, by, come on. Yeah, there we go. Uh, contradiction, statement was incorrect. Therefore, our original red statement was incorrect because the question is actually true and log base n of n plus one is irrational. Okay, so really important that you know how to set up your contradiction proofs and then try and work out how you can make them to not make sense, thus proving your original statement. Okay, beautiful. Now let's move on to a band five question from the 2021 HSC. This question's got a very specific trick to it that if you don't spot, it's very hard to prove. And if you do know, do know the trick, you can answer this very quickly, which is why it's only two marks. Proving that two to the n plus three to the n is not equal to five to the n if n is greater than or equal to two. So obviously if n is one, this is true. We're trying to show that for any number bigger than one, uh, it's not gonna work. Okay, so here's our process. We're gonna start with the fact that two plus three is equal to five. Uh, that's too fast for you, you can put the video on half speed and should slow it down and that will make more sense. Now we're going to raise both sides to the power of n. Two plus three to the power of n equal to five to the power of n. Now the tricky part is we are going to expand the left hand side using a binomial expansion with a generic term up to the nth value. So the first term we'll have at the very start will be two to the n and the thing on the very end will be three to the n. And everything in between will be the rest of your binomial expansion. So we've got n, c, one, so the pattern you would have established in class is that the two is stepping down in power each time and the three is stepping up in power each time up until it gets to n and your coefficients you're calculating by using combinations, okay? All you need to show is that you know that between the two to the n and the three to the n, there's a binomial expansion that looks something like this, okay? And importantly, because n is bigger than or equal to two, this part in the middle is gonna be something. It's not gonna be zero. That means we can subtract this all over to the right hand side and say two to the n plus three to the n is five to the n, take away all this stuff in the middle from the rest of the expansion. Again, like I said, n is bigger than or equal to two, which means this inside the brackets is not equal to zero, which is probably worth stating if you wanna make sure you're getting full marks. So therefore the left hand side and the right hand side um, in the equivalency or the question, I guess, uh, is not true because clearly two to the n plus three to the n is not equal to five to the n because we're taking away all this extra change from the expansion. So we can say, therefore, this is true. And there we've got our two marks for the question. Okay, and finishing off with some really spicy uh, inequalities questions from the band, uh, from the 2021 HSC paper. This was a band five, six level question. I'd say the first part is probably band six and then the part that should say B, but imagine, yeah, just imagine that's a B. Uh, second part is a bit easier once you've done the first part properly. So pause the video, have a play around if you want, but yeah, this one is quite challenging. So if you just wanna play along with me, um, I really can't stop you because I'm very far away. Okay, part A, this is what we're trying to show. We've been given the fact that square root of xy is less than or equal to x plus y over two. In, in this question, because it's very high level, you don't need to prove this. However, in the 2022 HSC paper, this right here was a two mark question, prove this. So you should really know confidently how to prove this inequality because it's very common and very useful. We're just gonna dive right in. Okay, we're gonna start with the square root of ABC. We're gonna think of this as the square root of AB times C. So in the original thing from the question, we're gonna think of X as AB, and we're gonna think of Y as C. So using the inequality, we can say we're gonna get less than or equal to AB plus C all over two. Okay, that's the first part. Second part, even sneakier, we're gonna have X as A squared, and we're gonna have Y as B squared. Okay, the reason we're doing that is because we can see in the goal, we wanna end up with an A squared and a B squared, so we're gonna need to get one in the mix somehow. So on the left-hand side, um, so we've got the square root of A squared, B squared. The squared and the square roots cancel out because the numbers are all positive. So we end up with AB is less than or equal to A squared plus B squared plus two. Now, the reason this is so useful is because AB is an expression in our original inequality right here, AB plus C over two. 
we don't want to have an AB in our end target. We want to have an A squared and a B squared as the question specified. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to substitute it into this inequality and say, well, the square root of ABC is less than or equal to AB plus C over two. That's right there. But now if we change the, uh, the AB to be an A squared plus B squared over two, we're making it even bigger. Okay, so this is less than if we change the AB to be an A squared plus B squared over two, because we just said right here, AB is less than A squared plus B squared over two. Now what we need to do is tidy this up by multiplying everything on top and bottom of the fraction by two, leaving us with A squared B squared on the top. This turns into a two C and the two turns into a four and there is your target for two marks. So yeah, pretty tricky. If you haven't seen it before, it's very hard to think of this on the spot, especially in the pressure of, of an exam room, but that's why this is a band six question to see who is the best of the best. Definitely not me. All right, part two. Now we're using um, part A, and again, imagine that's a B, and imagine I was um, actually good at making PowerPoints. We're gonna use this to try and prove that the square root of ABC is less than all of this. So let's approach this logically. Right here, we have an expression with an a squared and a b squared. In the target for this question, we want an a squared, a b squared, and a c. Likewise, in the original, we have a c right here, but we wanna have an a, a b, and a c. This is your kind of hint that we're gonna to need to make more of these with different combinations of a, b, and c to get us um, a c squared and to get us an a and a b. So we've got this one, we're gonna make another one. This one is, instead of a, b, c, it's a, c, b, which is technically the same thing but I'm just writing it in a different order to make it clearer. So we're gonna square the first bit, square the second bit, and then two times the last bit divided by four. Okay, so exact same inequality, just reversing the order of what I'm letting be A, B, and C. Likewise, I'm gonna do one for B, C, A. We're gonna have the first part as B squared, second part as C squared, and then the end part is two A. This is also over four. Now, good thing about these three inequalities is the left-hand side on all three is the same thing. I've just written them in a different order. Square root of ABC, square root of ACB, square root of BCA, they're all the same thing, and we can group them together by adding these three inequalities together. Okay, we're doing green plus green plus green. That's gonna give us three lots of ABC, because it's like we're doing X plus X plus X, we get three X. On the right, we're gonna add these all together as one big fraction. We got the first one here, the second one here, and then the third one here, and they all have a common denominator of four. That's the hard work done. Now we're just tidying up and making it look like our target. So all the A squareds um, group together to make two A squareds, two B squareds, two C squareds, and then we get two A's, two B's, and two C's. Now we can divide everything on top and bottom of the fraction by two, and we can divide the three across. That's gonna give us a six on the bottom. Okay, so everything gets turned into a one up top. That gets turned into a two. When we, and when we divide the three under, two times three turns into six and there is your target for two marks. So if you managed to get some of those, um, well done, because yeah, the band five sixes are really challenging, especially if you are seeing them for the first time and especially under pressure. Okay, that'll do it for today's revision video. If you found that useful and you would like more of these for the extension two or other courses, please let me know, because I kind of like making these. Um, hopefully you got some value out of that and you will subscribe and keep watching for more content. Bye for now and I'll see you guys soon.